Uh, good. Let's uh, go on a little bit. Uh, your name. I want to talk about names. I want to talk about names because names are something that are really interesting me at the moment. Um, I, I think there's th this is at the heart at the heart of what's wrong with our with our world at the moment is is about names, and I'll explain why in a moment. But I want to ask you. You know, if somebody says, what is your name? You just tell them your name. I want to ask you, what is your name? What is it? Not just my name is Andrew. What is that? What does it mean? And I don't also just mean what does it literally mean? What is the point of your name? What is the purpose of it? What does it do? What is its power? Um, it's not just a way to identify yourself. It was chosen by someone. Very few of us choose our own names. Sometimes people do in, in some uh, religions, for example, people will might take a religious role and they, they choose a new name. Uh, in a military world, sometimes uh, we hear these, uh, these warlords who have, give themselves a, their own fierce name. Uh, there are some circumstances where we give ourselves a name, but in general, we don't. We don't choose our name. Somebody chose it for you. Who chose it? Why did they choose it? Why that name? Why not another name? What's its meaning? What's behind the name? Your name is special. It's beautiful. And it is your truth. This is where your truth lives. It lives in your name. And if somebody hears your name, what will they hear? What will they know? What will they believe? What will your reputation be? You want, we say, this person has a good name. It means they have a good reputation or they have a bad name. It means they're not trustworthy. You want your name to be special and you want your name to be heard and you want your name to be respected. And your name is you. There's no separation between you and your name. So think about your name. This is a good starting point for your curiosity. Start with your own name. What is it? And ask each other, talk to each other, talk to your friends, talk to your family about your name and their names. And it's an interesting thing that, um, you know, I used to I read a lot of uh, ancient, um, ancient uh, literature. Uh, in the uh, ancient Greek world, very ancient world, um, the name was so special that if you went to, a, were welcomed into somebody's house and you were a stranger, you will never tell them your name at the beginning. Only after you get to know them, after you eat with them, after you drink with them, after you stay in their house, then you trust them enough to give them your name, to tell them your name, because your name is so special. So, of course, nowadays we don't. We introduce ourselves with our name, but it doesn't stop the name from being special. The name is still incredibly special. Um, so my interest in names uh, comes from a, f a few books that I've read recently and a few things that I've been thinking about. Um, and starting with something that I read, which said that the new edition of the Oxford Children's Dictionary has replaced a lot of its entries with different things. So for example, in the old editions, they had the words for all of the different type of trees and all of the different types of plants and most of the kinds of animals and all things about the natural world. But they've taken away a lot of those things from the new edition because they needed space to put things about technology and computers and uh, algorithms and games and all of these things and all of the technical hard things of the modern world they wanted to put in here and the only way they could do it was to take away things from the natural world so there are a lot of people a lot of young people out there who go out and they if they see a tree they see a tree but they don't see anything more than the tree because they don't know what kind of tree it is. They don't know that there are different kinds of trees. They don't know how to look for the difference. They don't know how to give it a name. They don't know 
in some cases even how to give some different types of animals names. Hopefully they know a cow and a sheep and a dog, but do they know what kind of cow or what kind of sheep and what kind of dog? Almost certainly not, very few. Probably less than 5% of people know those, those differences. And I'm coming to this picture in a moment, but the problem is here that if we don't name something, if we don't know how to name something, if we don't know what it is, we don't see it and we don't care about it. It's absolutely a fundamental thing about our relationship with the world. This is a, these are some yams actually. Um, and if you see a whole bunch of those yams in the marketplace, or you put them, we, we have a game I, I play with, uh, with young people sometimes. You put a whole bunch of these on the table um, and you ask somebody to take one and everybody takes one and they hold on to it for a couple of minutes and you say, now put it back. And they put it back. And then you say, okay, you mix them all up again and you say, now find your one, find the one that you had before. They cannot find it. They can never find it. They all look the same. It's just, they're just yams. They're just nothing. Why would you care about it? So then the next step, and you should play this game. It's worth playing this game. It's quite fun. Get some friends and play this game. The next time you mix them up and you say again, okay, choose one, take one. And this time, look at it. Look at it very carefully. Get to know it. See what its characteristics are. Is it big? Is it small? Is it long? Is it short? Identify it and give it a name. And then put it back and mix them up. And when you mix them up the second time and you say, now find your yam, they'll find it. Nine times out of 10, they'll then find it because they know it. They know its name. They know its characteristics and they care about it.